Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro of the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. You know, I really miss performing with my theater friends, even though we've had three online cabarets this year. Speaking of which, for those who don't follow me, I've looked at several movie musicals that fit with the Halloween theme. Several examples being Repo, the genetic opera, Little Shop of Horrors, and Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. However, while the Rocky Horror Picture Show is another good subject, that'll have to be saved for another year. So, tonight, let's talk about a stage musical that I consider as one of my all-time favorites. The Phantom of the Opera. Based on the 1910 French novel by Gaston Leroux, with music by Andrew Lloyd Webber, whom I talked about in my cat blog, and lyrics by Charles Hart, the plot revolves around a beautiful soprano named Christine Daae, who becomes the obsession of a mysterious, disfigured musical genius living in the subterranean labyrinth beneath the Paris Opera House. The musical opened in London's West End in 1986 and on Broadway in 1988. The show won the 1986 Olivier Award and the 1988 Tony Award for Best Musical. And Michael Crawford won the Olivier Award and Tony Awards for Best Actor in a Musical. It is currently the longest-running show in Broadway history, and it celebrated its 10,000th Broadway performance on February 11, 2012 the first production ever to do so. It is also the second longest running West End musical after Les Mis and the third longest running West End show overall after Mousetrap. With a total estimated worldwide gross receipts of over $6 billion and total Broadway gross of, of over $1 billion, Phantom of the Opera was the most financially successful entertainment event until The Lion King surpassed it in 2014. By the way, I was first introduced to the show in spring 2001, while I was in choir during my fourth grade year at Del Cerro Elementary School. And over the years, even though I never saw it on stage yet, with the exception of seeing it on demand a few months ago, and it's one of many shows that my theater friends can't do due to production, I've been listening to the soundtrack non-stop. And I've been hearing many different interesting facts regarding Phantom. For example, Howard McGillen, who voiced Prince Derek in The Swan Princess, was the longest-running Phantom. The Phantom character made a cameo in Hotel Transylvania 2, The show was also the inspiration for A Monster in Paris, and it was recently referenced during a song in My Little Pony, French of His Magic. Also, I heard that there have been several movie adaptations ever since 1916, and a while ago, I heard that there was supposed to be an animated version But so far, I haven't heard any news regarding it. So, for tonight's episode, I'd like to talk about a movie from 2004, which is one that audiences love, but several critics don't like too much. So, released on December 22nd, 2004, the movie is The Phantom of the Opera. So, the story begins with Opera Populaire's manager retiring and leaving Andre and Fairman in charge of the Opera House, along with their new patron, 
Le Vicomte du Chagny. To celebrate their new managers, the opera throws a gala, at which the leading diva refuses to perform due to the mysterious opera ghost who seems determined to have the screeching diva Carlotta leave. So, they involve the talents of a young chorus singer named Christine Daye, who has been taking lessons from a mysterious tutor. Christine is able to sing the lead role, and Raoul, Christine's old childhood sweetheart, who recognizes her at the triumphant gala performance, wants to bring Christine back into his life. But after Christine is taken to the Phantom's lair, Carlotta returns, so the Phantom demands that they keep giving the Protigue lead roles. Meanwhile, Christine falls in love with Raoul, which leaves the Phantom heartbroken and outraged. So, the disfigured Phantom plans to kidnap Christine in order to make her his eternal bride. So, what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, to me, this movie is, without a doubt, a musical masterpiece. And to further explain why I love this movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Warner Brothers purchased the film rights to The Phantom of the Opera in early 1989, granting Andrew Lloyd Webber total artistic control. Despite interest from A-list directors, Lloyd Webber and Warner Brothers instantly hired Joel Schumacher to direct it. For those who don't know, Joel Schumacher is the guy who directed the very first Batman movie that I ever watched. And bash me if you want, because that movie is still a guilty pleasure for me, thanks to a childhood friend, Justin Bernard Head, the creator of Slasher Films, Inc., recommending it for me. Lloyd Webber had been impressed with Schumacher's use of music in The Lost Boys. The duo wrote the screenplay that very same year. While Michael Crawford and Sarah Brightman were originally cast to reprise their roles from the original stage production, filming was set to begin at Pinewood Studios in England in July 1990 under a $25 million budget. However, the start date was pushed to November at both Babelsberg Studios in Munich, Germany and Berendorf Studios in Prague, Czech Republic. Production for The Fan of the Opera was stalled with Andrew Lloyd Webber and Sarah Brightman's divorce, and as a result, The Phantom of the Opera languished in development limbo for Warner Brothers throughout the 1990s. In February 1997, Schumacher considered returning, but eventually dropped out in favor of Batman Unchained, Runaway Jury, and Dreamgirls. Thankfully, Schumacher and Lloyd Webber restarted development for The Phantom of the Opera in December 2002. It was then announced in January 2003 that Lloyd Webber's really useful group had purchased the film rights from Warner Brothers in an attempt to produce the fan of the opera independently. As a result, Lloyd Webber invested $6 million of his own money, and Warner Brothers was given a first look deal for distribution. When the principal cast was chosen in June 2003, Warner Brothers paid under $8 million to acquire the North American distribution rights. Principal photography lasted from September 15, 2003 to January 15, 2004. The film was shot entirely using eight sound stages at Pinewood Studios, where on the Pinewood back lot, the bottom half exterior of the Palais Garnier, or Garnier Palace in English, was constructed. The top half was implemented using a combination of CGI and a scale model created by Cinesite. The surrounding Paris skyline for All I Ask of You 
was entirely composed of maté paintings. Cinecite also created a miniature falling chandelier since a life-size model was too big for the actual set. Production designer Anthony D.G. Pratt was influenced by French architect Charles Garnier, the designer of the original Paris Opera House, as well as Edgar Degas, John Singer Sargent, Gustave Kellebolt, the pre raphaelite Brotherhood, and Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Schumacher was inspired by Jean Cocteau's Beauty and the Bees from 1946, where a hallway is lined with arms holding candelabra. The cemetery was based on Pierre Raquet's, or Cemetery of the East, and Montparnasse. Costume designer Alexandra Byrne utilized a limited black, white, gold, and silver color palette for the masquerade party. Now, what I like about this movie is the setting in 1870s Paris, France, which may I remind you viewers, is a city that I really want to visit in my future. And I think the Opera Populaire is a really beautiful and grand theater. And after watching this movie again, it kind of reminds me of a similar theater that was featured in other animated movies like Don Bluth's Anastasia, Mickey Donald Goofy, The Three Musketeers, and Ballerina, a.k.a. Leap. Plus, I think the Phantom's lair underneath the opera house looks very mysterious. Speaking of which, I think the Phantom's backstory, which was not in the stage version, was kind of surprising, haunting, and intense. Also, I think the mirror scene where we first see the Phantom kind of gives me the strangest Sleeping Beauty vibes due to how haunting it is. And I thought the part where the chandelier crashes into the audience was really intense. Also, I thought the scenes that were set in 1919 was kind of interesting, especially during the auction at the beginning. Now, let's talk about a few of the songs, and in my opinion, these songs are Andrew Lloyd Webber's best works. Let's start with the title song, The Phantom of the Opera, which is sung when the Phantom takes Christine to his lair in the catacombs. To me, this song is my absolute favorite, due to how haunting it is, and I really like the duet between Christine and the Phantom, and I like the part where we hear an organ and electric guitars. Plus, I think this is one of the many songs that you'd listen to when Halloween rolls by. Also to note, this was the song that introduced me to the show when I was in choir during my elementary school age. The next song to talk about is the love song, All I Ask of You. To me, this song is really beautiful and romantic. And while listening to it, I can definitely feel the love between Raoul and Christine, and I think the wintry scenery and visuals gives it a nice magical touch. Next is Masquerade, which is sung during the New Year Masquerade Ball at the beginning of Act 2. This is another favorite of mine due to everyone wearing masks and costumes. Plus, I like the choreography and I like that during the song, Raul and Christine announce their engagement. Next is Wishing You Were Somehow Here Again, which is sung by Christine as she journeys through the cemetery to see her father's grave. To me, this is a really powerful and emotional song. And sometimes it brings a tear to my eye every time I listen to it. Also, I think songs like Angel of Music and Think of Me are very beautiful Phantom of the Opera songs 
and Music of the Night and The Point of No Return are very powerful hits. Also, there are songs like Poor Fool He Makes Me Laugh, a.k.a. Il Muto, is pretty funny when Carlotta's throat spray gets tampered with, and Magical Lasso, Why So Silent, and Don Juan are really haunting, menacing, and intimidating. And now, let's move on to the cast. The title character and villain, the Phantom of the Opera, or Eric as he's known in the novel, is played by Gerard Butler, best known from the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy, 300, Dracula 2000, and Nim's Island. In my opinion, while the Phantom is very demanding, mischievous, and sneaky, while causing accidents and disasters at the Opera House, and blackmailing the managers with his notes, you can't feel a little bit sympathy for him, not just due to his deformed face, but also from his backstory, where he was abused and billed as the devil's child in a freak show. Now that, to me, is just insanely cruel. Also, while Jared Butler does pull off a great performance, What's interesting is that prior to his audition, Butler had no professional singing experiences, and he only taken about four voice lessons before singing The Music of the Night for Lloyd Webber. Our main character, Christine Daye, is played by Emmy Rossum, who was in The Day After Tomorrow, Beautiful Creatures, and the horrendous Dragon Ball Evolution. In my opinion, Christine is a lovely character, and she has an interesting and tragic childhood backstory. You see, before her father Gustav's death when she was seven years old, he promised that Christine would be watched over and coached by an angel of music. And after being taken in by Madame Giry, Christine has been living at the Opera House, performing as a chorus girl. Later, after her grand debut in Hannibal, she meets the Phantom, whom she believes is the spirit of her father. Also, I think Emmy Rossum does an outstanding performance as Christine, and her singing voice is just amazing. Christine's love interest, Vicomte Raoul de Chagny, is played by Patrick Wilson, whom I've talked about in my Aquaman blog. Raoul has known Christine ever since they were children when he went on vacation in northern France. In my eyes, Raoul seems like a charming and likable guy, and I like that Raoul is a patron for the opera. And... I like that little Lottie poem that he recites when he reunites with Christine. Plus, I think Raoul and Christine make a sweet couple. Also, I think Raoul is well trained with a sword, and he's also clever when he and the managers make a plan to capture the Phantom. Next, we come to the mysterious Madame Giry played by Miranda Richardson, who was in Ardman's Chicken Run, Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, Richard Rich's animated adaptation of The King and I, and of course, Harry Potter 4. Jiri works as a choreographer at the Opera House. Plus, she adopted Christine after Gustav's death. Also, Madame Giry knows the Phantom on a personal basis, being aware of his history to some extent. In my opinion, Madame Giry can be strict at times, 
but she is a kind character. And I like that she's raised Christine like she was her own daughter. Plus, her backstory when she rescued a young phantom from the freak show was pretty interesting and shocking at the same time. Next is Carlotta Guticelli, played by Minnie Driver, whom I remember from Hayao Miyazaki's Princess Mononoke, Disney's Tarzan, Ella Enchanted, and ugh, South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Carlotta is the leading soprano and prima donna at the Paris Opera House, who is criticized by the Phantom for the lack of emotion in her performances. In the original novel, it was said that Carlotta came from Spain. However, in the movie and in the show, Carlotta is from Italy. To me, I don't really like Carlotta too much due to the fact that she despises Christine and sees the young woman as a threat to her job when Christine achieves prominence due to the Phantom's dirty tricks. Also to note, due to Driver's lack of experience in opera, her singing voice was dubbed by opera singer Margaret Priest. Next we come to the opera managers, Gillet Andre and Richard Furman, played by Simon Cowell and Syrian Hines. These guys are the new managers of Opera Populaire. In my eyes, they're okay. Sure, they mean business when it comes to organizing each show, but sometimes they can be kind of incompetent and stubborn, especially when they ignore the Phantom's demands, and I think the part where they grovel at Carlotta is kind of downgrades them a bit. Our next character is Meg Jerry, played by Jennifer Ellison, whom four years later was in The Cottage. In my eyes, Meg is an underrated character, not only because she's Madame Jerry's oldest daughter, but I like hers and Christine's best friend slash sisterly relationship. Also, I liked when she and her mother suggest the managers to put Christine in the leading role. The last character to talk about is Joseph Bouquet, played by Kevin McNally, best known for playing Joshimi Gibbs from the Pirates of the Caribbean films. Hmm, no wonder he seems so familiar. Now, Joseph is the chief stagehand for the theater who claims to have seen the opera ghost. While he doesn't have a big part in the story, one of his highlight scenes is when Joseph describes the Phantom's appearance to the ballet choir and when he demonstrates the way to counter his magical lasso, which happens to be the Phantom's weapon to strangle his victims. Unfortunately, later during the Il Muto Ballet, Joseph is captured by the Phantom, who strangles and hangs him from the stage rafters. Yeesh. Anyway, let's move on to my final words. Overall, the 2004 Phantom of the Opera movie, despite its low percentage on Rotten Tomatoes, is still a masterpiece of a movie musical. And, I have to admit... I like it way better than Cats. The setting in 1870s Paris is great, and it makes me want to go there in my future. The story is dark, epic, mature, interesting, romantic, thought-provoking, and haunting. The music by Andrew Lloyd Webber is awesome. The songs are classical. The choreography is fantastic. And the cast from Gerard Butler, Emmy Rossum, and Patrick Wilson do great jobs playing their characters. So, if you guys are die-hard fans of musical theater, or if you like Andrew Lloyd Webber's works, 
then I think you might enjoy this movie too. However, due to the dark atmosphere and violent imagery, this is not something I would recommend for kids under the age of 13. But still, give this movie a watch during this spooky season, and hopefully someday I can see Phantom of the Opera on stage in person. So, I give this movie... a what the hey. I give it a full 100%. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me next time, where I take you guys back to Monstropolis. Mustang Power. <laughs>